Barefoot training, the do's and the don'ts. When it comes to barefoot training, it can be an immensely useful tool for many reasons, but you have to be careful as to when and why you would implement barefoot training. Being careful with barefoot training simply boils down to, are you ready for barefoot training? And the biggest thing that you have to ensure is that you have proper arches with your feet. So you should be able to take your two digits and stick them under your feet, almost to a point where you can just kind of hide them, like so. If you do not have proper arches, what will happen is the feet flatten out. As the feet flatten out, you can run into a host of issues. Specifically, uh, you're gonna overpronate, and that can often cause increased pressure right at the bottom of your big toe, which can form bunions. Sometimes it will cause increased activation or improper activation and your plantar fasciitis will flare up and other times it can cause shin splints. So when you would want to avoid barefoot training or some aspects of barefoot training is if that's the case. Another area where you would want to avoid or another reason why you would want to avoid barefoot training is if you've had any type of ankle issue, you have screws in your ankle and you have limited dorsiflexion like so. Limited dorsiflexion can often cause again that plantar fasciitis and just for that barefoot training to be um, somewhat useless in a sense or somewhat improper. Where barefoot training can really, really be beneficial is, as Dr. Andrew Ospina often describes in his FRC courses, if you do not use muscles, you lose muscles. And we really protect the muscles of our feet by putting them in shoes, but sometimes this can be detrimental because we're not using these muscles and therefore we're starting to lose their activation and their ability to help with uh, things like human gait, things like squatting, etc., etc. So barefoot training and just getting used to being in your bare feet can be a really, really good thing. Again, so long as you have proper arches and you have proper mechanics. The other thing that barefoot training can be really helpful with is activating different muscles. Particularly if I have someone who is telling me that they have patellofemoral pain, if they have the right mechanics with their arches, with their feet, the big thing I'm gonna get them to do is barefoot training and pushing through that big toe. Really driving through your big toe and things like squats and lunges can help to activate vastus medialis oblique, which can really help to protect your knee. And ultimately by protecting your knee and getting rid of that pain, it will help you with things such as squats, deadlifts, etc. because now you're not compensating to avoid that pain. The other area or the other muscle that can be really engaged with barefoot training is digging through my heels. So if I just stand here and I do something like a deadlift regularly, I'll feel my hamstrings and I'll feel my glutes. But if I really start to drive through my heels and push down through my heels, I can really get those muscles to activate. And this is another area where barefoot training can transfer over really well. Things like squats, things like deadlifts. Driving through your heels, Glutes are often, again, a muscle that we don't use a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, and so they become more and more inactive. Our neural drive becomes dampened, but by digging through our heels, that's one of the ways we can increase neural drive. So our feet are very much so proprioceptive, and they'll help us to engage different muscles, and this is why barefoot training can be beneficial. So to recap, when you would want to avoid barefoot training, uh, particularly if you have collapsed arches or any previous ankle injury, you might want to do a few exercises to start to train your arches. So one of the big ones that I get clients to do is just pushing their big toe down, really trying to drive their big toe into the ground, create an arch and get those muscles to reactivate. I'll also get them to drive big toe up while pushing those toes down. Where barefoot training can be really beneficial is again, in any sort of resistance exercise program, so long as you have that proper dorsiflexion, awesome, and what that can do is, you, you can do hip exercises, but particularly for things like squats, deadlifts, lunges, this is where it's gonna be really beneficial. But if you're doing jumping and you're doing moving, that's gonna be okay too, because again, we're using these muscles, we're using those proprioceptive features, and ultimately that's gonna give us more control in things like walking, in things like running, etc., etc. 
But with that being said, again, you just want to make sure that you have those proper mechanics. So you want to have good arches, you want to have some good dorsiflexion, so you can see I can get my knee past my toe here quite well. If you have those prerequisites, you're ready to start barefoot training. If you don't, then you want to reel it back in a little bit, work on your ankle dorsiflexion, work on your big toe mobility, as well as trying to develop an arch again, and then from there you can transition over to barefoot training.